Welcome to Star Citizen and the complete analysis and detailed summary of all panels of CitizenCon 2953, here in the first part. Because in the context of CitizenCon, there was countless new information about the current state of Star Citizen and its future, but with a strong focus on Squadron 42. And in particular, we have presented the analysis of the Squadron 42 presentation in detail in a separate video. Now, let's deal with the first day of CitizenCon 2953 and the various panels. Here, the most basic and most important announcement took place directly at the start, directly from Chris Roberts. Namely, the playable version of the Pyro system. Because with a custom preview test environment, the Step 2 Pyro becomes playable starting on end of October. Visitors to CitizenCon on site were already able to play this. And so, from end of October, selected players can play Pyro themselves in a special preview channel, their own test server. And the access to this preview version is determined by chance. And here, between owners of the digital goodies pack, which could be bought for just under $40 in the context of CitizenCon, concierge members in the different levels, and the most active testers are selected. Subsequently, the usual waves come to beer. And since this playable version of Pyro is a real milestone, because it is the first system outside of the starting system Stanton, there was a lot of confidence in the subsequent announcement, right at the beginning. Because we have repeatedly seen cheek demos, animations and videos in the past years, I only remember a few sandworms. But with the playable Pyro version, we now have something tangible, real, which is also playable. And here, Chris Roberts also announced that in the coming days, the various progress, especially for Squadron 42, will be visible. And also the concern is unfounded that Squadron 42 could be outdated for release. And to put it in advance, the technologies shown and the current state are really worthy of a AAA title of today. And the current demonstration of the star engine shown here showed the strength of Star Citizen. No transitions from planets and moons to other areas, space stations, as well as a jump into another system. And so, we not only got to see space cows, but also extended stations. The latest version of cloud and gas technologies, various planet surfaces and moons, extended asteroid fields, which are apparently rendered completely, and of course, space whales. Because the storm whales have only been seen as stages, or concept drawings so far. And the most important point in the presentation was exactly the jump to Pyro. Because with it, we don't just get a second system after all these years. No, even the core technologies, up to a final server meshing, have been initiated with it. And this will accelerate the development of Star Citizen, the persistent universe and, of course, Squadron 42 immensely. And during the presentation, it was pointed out again how important the implementation of persistence was. And what a big challenge it posed. And here there was another exciting and rather unusual announcement. Because what we got to see in the trailer is to become reality within the next two years. Whereby we can be absolutely confident here in the context of the already playable Pyro version that this can also be reality. Especially in the context that CIG has been very careful in the last time when it comes to release periods or a fixation of appointments. And the current star engine, of course, plays an important role here, which should enable an impressive performance. With a seamless streaming of different assets in a huge scope, where clouds, fog and weather effects are rendered in real time. Another area was the idea of the dynamic fire system, which is also represented in the star engine. This poses a real danger in terms of gameplay and can arise from various and diverse sources. The engine constantly calculates all factors such as heat, smoke and radiation in real time to create a as authentic result and experience as possible. But also the pendant fire, the water, was a topic of the current presentation. 
Here, the new forward shading method was used, which improves the transparency of the water, light, foam bubble throw and other systems are integrated into the system to create a closeness of reality. And here, the physical correct calculation of the water should also react to various influences. What we will see again in a detailed panel on this technology. But also, the creation of realistic rock formations was mentioned, whereby the store engine here enables to use various shapes and textures in a flexibility, which should represent a naturalness. Also, a first destructible environment was presented in a limited scope, whereby the damage models also play a role. And with a new real-time clothing simulation, as well as various new shader effects for blood, sweat and dirt, this first very impressive demo of the Star Engine was completed. And at this point, the important note. It was a demo. Because, especially for long-term citizens, a healthy skepticism in terms of Star Citizen, demos and a citizen con is always in the back of mind. Subsequently, some of the areas were presented again in more detail. The start was made here by the current version of the clouds, fog and weather technologies, which are rendered in the real time and rely on an authentic good ray technology. Thus, a realistic impression of the environment is created with corresponding light breaks and ground fog effects. In the next area, it was about a representation of the dynamic fire. And the fire in Star Citizen should be a real danger, not only on ships, but also in various other areas. In doing so, the engine permanently calculates all factors such as heat, smoke, radiation and more in real-time to create an authentic fire. However, it is exciting how these calculations affect the performance not only for us but also for other players. And of course, a different damage model with corresponding damages and shaders is also placed here, which should show the fire damage and its consequences. But we can also take countermeasures against the fire, such as the use of a fire extinguisher. This is also equipped with a suitable fog technology and offers an approach of firefighting, as well as the possibility of removing oxygen from a specific area. And where there is fire, there is also water. Because this element has also brought to a current level, which corresponds to the industry and can keep up with AAA titles. Here, in addition to an optical evaluation with bubbles, waves and so, we also find the physical background, so a physicalization of the respecting effects on the water. And of course, all areas that could take place under the water surface were not mentioned. In any case, we definitely have an optical added value. But there are no direct effects on gameplay or playful use yet. However, the immersion increases significantly. Also, extremely massive is the new representation of the tears, sweat, heat and blood effects, which we get as a shader on the faces of characters, be it NPCs or players. Another optical and rather smaller feature is the physical and optical representation of the various sighting devices which offers a realistic picture depending on the magnification and type depending on the viewing angle. Here we can also see in our side view where this is looking. Much more exciting and also performance relevant are improvements such as features like high dynamic rendering, so HDR and of course the use of DLSS and FSR, although we have not been yet reached the maximum with version 2. But modern GPUs are already much better equipped. But also the addition of TSA, a modern anti-aliasing method on the next generation was mentioned. Here it was noted that it can lead to a doubling of the frame rates when the CPU is able to work according to the GPU. The goal is to achieve much more performance with fewer resources with minimal quality losses and visual quality. And the real-time weather simulation is still planned. And it can be understood that, for example, a sun warms up a surface and this surface heat changes the wind, which in turn can cause weather. But this is of course still in a very early stage. In the field of Gen 12 and Vulcan implementation, there is still work to be done, but the transmission is already going very well. 
Here, stability concerns remain a complete integration. As soon as Gen12 is completely implemented, however, it enables hardware ray tracing, which requires an update of the lighting model. But the Star Engine enables ray tracing. Here, different situations were represented, such as the head or opening a cargo door where the sun could shine through everything so that you couldn't see anything. But ray tracing would be exactly the right key. The next topic was all about physics. With Star Cloth, we finally have a fabric simulation. Here, we have a factor that allows fabrics to move with air circulations and wind. In addition, the physical mesh has been improved, which makes the fabric look more realistic. And star hair also have been further developed. So a gravitation of hair, which is simulated with wind movements. But this technology cannot be applied to fabrics. We found the destructible environments, which we were represented in the first version, much more interesting. Here, it was noticed that, for example, a building is destroyed, a damage model of different systems within the building must also be represented. In this way, for example, electricity would also run out in the event of a corresponding destruction. Here, fragile clusters help to define how things will fall apart and how it can be physically correct represented. But a completely destructible environment with all objects is not yet in sight. Here, it probably only limits itself to different destructible areas and not the full-scale destruction of the entire environment or landscape. And subsequently, there was an update to the various sound improvements, new audio effects for weapons and generally sounds in reverse. But we are not limited to the ground, but also for ships. There was an update to sounds and a whole sound backdrop. And the new areas presented all sound a bit dumper and more realistic. And in addition, a spread of the sound is more realistic. Because breathing in helmet is for example muffled and sound effects from outside are also muffled accordingly, depending on what kind of head condition we are in or where we are. Subsequently, the persistent entity streaming was presented. This very technical presentation, the entity graph, the server renderer and the client were represented. Here there was naturally little image material. Although this is one of the most important areas of further development of Star Citizen. Graphically, different zones were subdivided, each with its own inventory. And this inventory can be used by players and various objects in real time. And when assets are added or moved to new zones, this migrates to the various other zones. And so this is of course not visible for the player. But this background exchange for server meshing and the functioning system is indispensable. In addition, the server authorities were addressed, which server has to control and how a handshake of several servers can be displayed seamlessly. In the following panel, everything revolves around resource management and the engineering gameplay. Because the engineering gameplay is a subsystem of this resource network, which we got to see in the context of the presentation. Here the various components, weapons, energy distributions, doors and other areas are shown. We have already seen something similar in various Inside Star Citizen episodes, although this is a huge update. With this, various systems can be exchanged, maintained or redirected for energy flow. And in the video shown before, we see how a fury lands, it is scanned and it is determined that the energy supply was not sufficient. Subsequently, various components were removed and replaced with new ones. An overview map shows us the various loads and the state of the various components and devices on board, where the display takes place in real time. In addition, it is possible to open or close doors in this way and to track enemy intruders in a ship via the scanner. This also makes it possible to block uninvited guests. And of course, the oxygen can also be released from various rooms accordingly. So we can fight fire, which we have already seen in the previous panel, and accordingly we fought to prevent further damage and subsequently carry out the repair. And at this point it becomes clear that a solo gameplay, especially on larger ships, is almost impossible. And it was also noted that there will be an NPC crew later, who will take care of it, but that is probably still far, far away. These guys first have to get off the tables. And in the following panel, talking ships, 
As expected, there were some new ships to see. In the beginning, there were the already flight ready and available in the verse Crusader Spirit A1. And of course, we will provide you with an extensive ship guide here. The A1 is already flight ready and you can test it in the verse. A not quite spoiler free surprise was a new ship from Robert Space Industries. It is still in the grey box phase and there will be four variants. However, only three variants were announced, as a racing version was seen on some pictures, but then did not appear in the announcement. So for the Zeus Mark II, we get a cargo version, an exploration variant, and rather a combat heavy one with EMP and quantum dampener. But of course, we will provide you shortly with a pre-release guide to all three variants. All details and some question about the component equipment and the possibilities. Due to the fact that the Zeus Mark II is already in the Greybox phase, it can be expected to appear in the verse with a rather short time. In addition, none of the variants offer mechanics that are not already available in the verse. But there were also news about another ship that has been in the Greybox for a long time, which will probably stay here also for a long time, and that is the Banu Merchantman. But more on that in a moment. First of all, the Scout variant of the Drake Cutter was announced, which is also flight ready in the game. Here an upgrade of the Base Cutter to the Scout variant for around $5 is possible, which can be seen as a meaningful investment, especially in the beginner area. And of course, for the Scout variant of the Cutter, you will soon find an extensive ship guide here on the channel. And with the Scout variant, we even saw a relatively inexpensive new ship in the verse. It was also noted that about 200 vehicles and ships are currently in the work. Subsequently, there was one of the most anticipated ship, the Banu Merchantman in the most current variant, which has been in the grey box phase for a long time. Some textures are still missing here and the work, especially in the interior, was not continued. Here, it was explained again that they are aware that we have been waiting for the Banu Merchantman for a long time, but this was delayed due to Squadron 42. It was also noted that the Idris in all variants will be released with the Squadron 42 in the Persistent Universe, but the Javelin not yet, but only later. And also, all alien ships will receive their already finished visual updates next month. With that, we definitely have some highlights visual in the house. We will also hear from a new mining ship very soon, here the larger variant of RSI is likely to be expected. Because in addition, it was announced that the ships of RSI will be expanded, where the Polaris was also mentioned. Because the expansion of the RSI ship family will also affect the development. But there were no release dates or indications of when we can expect the new ships in the entire ship area. And at the end of day one, there was also a lot of footage of the Ares I Polaris in the grey box phase. Because this is also one of the most anticipated ships in addition to the Banu Merchantman. But here too, no time periods were mentioned and it can take some time until the Ares I Polaris finds its way into the universe. We bet that it will be related to the release date of Squadron 42. Because then, we will have another capital ship with an Idris in the verse. But we can't wait to see what happens. And in the demo video, it was also shown what a Polaris means for an Idris. Because with his size 10 torpedoes and the hangar, we saw already an RSI Scorpius take off and finish the Idris. So the RSI Polaris poses a significant threat to all larger ships. Of course, provided that the torpedoes hit and are not intercepted. But the next panel was no less exciting, because it dealt with a topic that has been on everyone's nerves for a long time, namely the new version of the star map. In the future, this will not only offer a mini-map on the ground, in ships or in other areas, but also opportunities for route planning, displays of various areas such as quest areas, access doors and so on. 
as well as much better accessibility and optics. With this, we can look ahead in the future, planning routes, create self points of interest, save markers and much more. Not only the map was revised, but also the entire Mobi glass. It is a bit more like a smartphone and has different apps that we can use and adjust accordingly. But the new star map extends not only on the ground, but also in space and on ship we are on. However, it can be assumed that we only get map representations for areas that we already know or where data is available. This means that the exploration will not to be too short and we will not know in advance what we will map. Because with this new map function, one of the biggest and longest points of criticism in Star Citizen will be cleared. But unfortunately, no exact release period was mentioned here either. And according to our assessment, we will have to wait until the release of Squadron 42 for the new map. This is because it was noticed that it is not quite final yet. For example, a search function is still missing, which is added and other small features. But the filter function and the drop-down selection field is already impressive for various areas, which can be selected as navigation goals in a system. In addition, it is possible to set our own marking points and waypoints directly via the map function. And various degrees and directions are already indicated in the map itself, which will significantly improve our orientation. In addition, the stylistic representation of planets and structures is much more better than the previous representation. And with these panels, the first day of CitizenCon 2953 is over. See you for the summary of the second day with the panels there. And again the note, the summary for the Squadron 42 presentation we have already made available to you extensively. Because this is also part of the second day and of course there is no mentioned here anymore. So see you soon and of course see you in the verse. Thanks for watching.